Here's some of the stories trending this week at NASA. On May 3rd, NASA's Wallops Flight Facility hosted Senator Barbara Mikulski of Maryland, NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden and others for an employee town hall and a tour of the Virginia facility, including Pad 0A at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport. Preparations are underway there to conduct an engine test of Orbital ATK's Antares rocket in anticipation of returning Antares to flight operations this summer following a launch mishap in 2014. The medium-class launch facility provides NASA the capability to launch Orbital ATK's Antares and Cygnus spacecraft on resupply missions to the International Space Station. NASA and its International Space Station partners have announced the crews for missions to the station in 2017. They include two NASA astronauts. Scott Tingle will launch in September 2017 on his first space flight as part of the station's Expedition 53 crew. Two months later, the launch of Expedition 54 will mark the start of the second space flight for veteran astronaut Randy Bresnik. His first was November 2009 aboard Space Shuttle Atlantis on STS-129. During a ceremony on May 5th, the new computational research facility at NASA's Langley Research Center was named for mathematician and Presidential Medal of Freedom recipient Katherine Johnson. NASA dedicated the building to Johnson in recognition of her many contributions to America's space program. Johnson worked at Langley from 1953 until her retirement in 1986, beginning as a research mathematician as part of a group of women hired to perform mathematical calculations by hand for engineers. Her work was so outstanding, she was eventually assigned to the branch that later would calculate the launch windows for NASA's first Project Mercury flights. Her notable accomplishments include computation by hand of the launch window and trajectory for Alan Shepard's maiden space voyage aboard Freedom 7 in 1961, and verification also by hand of calculations made by the first computers for John Glenn's history-making orbit around the Earth in 1962. She also calculated the trajectory for the historic Apollo 11 first moon landing flight in 1969. Fittingly, the building dedication took place on the 55th anniversary of Shepard's momentous spaceflight. The planet Mercury's May 9th transit of the Sun is a relatively rare celestial event, with Mercury passing between Earth and the Sun only about 13 times a century, most recently in 2006. Those without the specialized and costly equipment needed to safely view the event can see imagery online at nasa.gov on NASA social media, and on NASA TV. Mercury will appear as a small black dot as it crosses the edge of the sun and into view at about 7.12 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Then for about the next seven and a half hours, the planet will make a leisurely journey across the face of the sun. An international team of astronomers, including one from NASA's Johnson Space Center, have discovered three potentially habitable planets around an ultra-cool dim dwarf star just 40 light years from us. The trio of planets, located using European Southern Observatory telescopes in Chile, have sizes and temperatures similar to those of Venus and the Earth. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope and Kepler spacecraft will be observing the dwarf star known as TRAPPIST-1 and its planets later this year. It also could be a good observational target for NASA's James Webb Space Telescope following its launch in 2018. As part of the integration and testing of the Webb Telescope, engineers at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, recently removed the protective covers from the telescope's primary gold-coated mirror for the first time since it was installed. The James Webb Space Telescope will be the most powerful space telescope ever built and will study many phases in the history of our universe, including the formation of solar systems capable of supporting life on planets similar to Earth, as well as the evolution of our own solar system. And that's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on social media and visit www.nasa.gov.